Okay, so before you start a colour, it's important that your client is gowned correctly. You need to have clean gowns and towels placed over your client with a plastic cape also to protect their clothing. The stylist should have relevant PPE. This is in the form of an apron, gloves, and the option of a mask and a goggles or visor. Currently during COVID-19, the stylist is required to wear these as is the client is required to wear a mask. As a stylist, always have your trolley set up with all the things that you're gonna need for that service and have that in a position to reduce fatigue and injury to yourself. Now, before any colour can carry, be carried out, there are some fundamental tests that need to be carried out. The first one is a skin test, and this needs to be carried out 48 hours before your service. And to do this, a small piece of colour is applied behind the ear, and reactions that we'd be looking for, which would stop the service from being carried out, would be redness, itching, or irritation of that area. If the client doesn't have a reaction, then you're safe to proceed with your colour. It is the law to do a skin test and everybody has to have a skin test. The other two fundamental tests that you should carry out before all colours, the first one is an elasticity test and this is carried out by taking a damp piece of hair between your thumb and forefinger and you are stretching and seeing if the hair returns to its original length. Now if you stretch the hair and it returns to its original length, this displays that the hair has good elasticity and the internal strength, the cortex of the hair, is in good condition. If you were to stretch the hair and to return it to its original, um, it doesn't return to its original point, this shows that the hair has poor elasticity. So that means the cortex of the hair is in jeopardy. So any colours that you use could cause further damage, particularly if these are colours are alkaline based like permanent or lightness. The second test that you would carry out is a porosity test. And this is carried out by running your thumb and forefinger up the hair shaft and you're feeling if the hair feels rough in any areas. Now often towards the ends of the hair, the hair could be feel a bit more porous than it does at the root area. Now this is really important when colouring hair because if the hair has poor porosity, that means that area of the hair may absorb the colour much quicker. So that area, part of the hair could take the colour quicker or it could give you an uneven colour result. So to help this, you can apply a porosity leveller to those areas which are damaged or have poor porosity to give you a much more even result. So they're the three key tests that we should carry out before all chemical services. Okay, today we're going to look at our quasi colour and I've already sectioned the head into four quarters as we did in our last video. I've pre-mixed my quasi colour into my bowl ready for application. With a quasi colour you use your tube and your low level of peroxide for mixing. Always make sure that you're using a measuring cylinder, that it's placed on a flat surface and you're at eye level so that you can accurately measure and you're measuring your spatula for mixing your colour so that you're not using your brush to keep clean working procedures. Okay, starting on our back section, I'm going to comb the hair down with my first section. You'll see with my hair here, some of that is already out now because that's too short to go into my clip. But make sure that the rest of the hair that you're moving out of the way is nice and clean and tidy and isn't going to interfere with the first section that you're working on. Start your application at the root. Making sure that you do the root underneath as well around your front hairline. And then work the colour from the root to the mid lengths and through to the ends. Taking your next section approximately quarter of an inch straight across as per our semi-permanent colour video. Again apply to the root area on top and underneath to ensure even application and work the colour right through to the ends 
massaging with your hands as well as your application with your brush to make sure that you've got a really nice even coverage on that colour. Now our Quasi colours can blend up to 70% of white hair, okay? This means it's great for our clients that have got a small amount of, of white hair coming through and then that they don't have to have the commitment of a permanent regrowth yet. We also use it to darken and change the tone of a colour. A quasi permanent colour can be applied to wet or dry hair. We often use quasi permanents after lightening hair on wet hair as our toners. With a quasi permanent, the colour molecules are of mixed size, so you have some larger molecules, some smaller molecules, and these sit in the cortex, providing a longer lasting colour than our semi-permanent, but not as long as our permanent, meaning they have a slightly more flexible ability with the colour and choices of things you can do with them. Quasi colour will last approximately 18 to 24 washes, depending on how frequently your client washes their hair at home and the shampoos and conditioners that they're using at home. It's really important that your client is using products that will help to lengthen the life of their colour. And as hairdressers, we help to provide the aftercare advice to them to make sure they understand fully how to get the best out of their hair. Make sure again as with the semi that you're combing that hair through thoroughly to make sure you can get an even application of the colour. I'm making sure again that all of the hair is working away from the client's face so that I don't risk dropping colour onto their face. And I'm really massaging that colour into the hair to make sure there's a really even thorough application. Now I've done section one, I'm going to move on to the second section at the back. Once I've completed that section, I'll then move on to the two front sections.
Okay, so now we've come to the point of the removal of the colour. When we've allowed the colour to develop following the manufacturer's instructions, we can do a strand test to make sure that the colour has developed properly. By doing this, we would remove the colour from the roots to the ends to make sure that you've got even coverage throughout that colour application. Okay, if you didn't have an even coverage, then you would allow your colour to develop for a little bit longer and then retest to make sure you were happy with the result. Again, as per the previous video, make sure that the water temperature is suitable for your client. Emulsify that colour again. So really massage that colour off of that scalp to make sure you're thoroughly removing it. And you can use colour, if you do have a bit of staining, to remove the tint around the front. So tint removes tint. When doing your strand test, your type 1, type 2 hair types may take longer to develop because there's more layers of the cuticle cortex and a thicker medulla. So you may find that actually it takes longer to develop, whereas your type 3 and 4 may take less time to develop as there's less layers of the hair. Make sure you're being really careful to get that colour rinsed out from the nape of the neck. Squeeze any excess water out of the hair. your shampoo. We'll still always do two shampoos to ensure that we've thoroughly removed the colour from the hair and cleanse the hair and scalp. Make sure that you're being gentle on the scalp because you may find with the open cuticle and hair follicle that your, your client's scalp is a little bit more sensitive to pressure. So you can always ask them if they're happy with that pressure and if that feels okay for them. Squeeze out any excess water and towel dry and then we'll apply our conditioner. Using our antioxidant conditioner to help close that cuticle down again, we'll do our scalp massage, checking with our client that they're happy with the pressure and work that conditioner right the way through to the ends. Came in through. Last rinse, making sure that any conditioner product and residue colour is thoroughly rinsed away. And double check for any skin staining that may need cleaning off with some more stain remover.